is up? Good morning. Happy Sunday. So good to see you guys online. Hope you guys are all having a super awesome week. Welcome back to our series, It's Personal. If you're just joining us, we have been spending the last couple of weeks in the book of Luke, which is one of the Gospels, talking about the story of this dude named Zacchaeus. We talked about how Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. He knew what mattered to Jesus. Uh, Jesus knew what mattered to Zacchaeus. Jesus knew uh, Zacchaeus' story. And despite all of that, how Jesus loved him and hung out with him. And in the same way, Jesus knows us, knows what matters to us, knows our story, and wants to be in a relationship with us, with us despite all of that. Well, team, we are continuing in this series. We are week four. And we're going to talk about how it's personal because Jesus loves us no matter what. I'm super excited for this uh, week because this is an important thing for us to continue to hear and continue to remember because sometimes it's hard for us to remember that no matter what, that Jesus loves us. So as we jump into this week, let's kick things off with a little prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for uh, being a God who is with us, for being a God who is present with us, even though we don't always see it or feel it. And Lord, for just being a God who loves us. Lord, as we hear from you this morning and as we hear from Zacchaeus, just allow us to remember that important truth, Lord. And as some of us have been struggling this week or some of us have been feeling down, we just ask that you would remind us how much you love us, Lord, and how you love us no matter what we say or do or think or no matter how we act. Lord, we thank you for being a God who loves us. In your name we pray, amen. Have you guys ever tried to do a new skill or do something new? I was thinking about this a couple weeks ago because we were on fall retreat with some of the high school students and you guys, some of you know, because you have older siblings and we got to go to Pismo Beach to do a little surf trip and to do a little small group time. And a majority of the students who went with us uh, to the Pismo trip had never surfed before, couldn't surf. And surfing is a really fun thing, but it's super challenging. It's challenging because no wave is the same. It's challenging because it's kind of weird to stand on a surfboard and figure out your balance. And it's challenging because it's just a physical activity. And it was amazing to watch each and every uh, student, each and every high school student, face this challenge. Some of them picked up the skill pretty quickly. They had surfed, or sorry, they had snowboarded or skated before, and so surfing was kind of easy, and they picked it up right away and hopped on and popped up on some waves. Other students struggled to get on the board, to stand up, to balance. They had to struggle through a challenge and some of us can relate to that. Some of us have tried new things or done new things and we realize that that can be really challenging. That those actions don't always produce positive outcomes. And when I was learning to play guitar, it was really challenging for the first couple of months and my fingers hurt and they were bleeding, gross. When we try and learn new skills, we can be deterred by the fact that sometimes things are tough and we let that define who we are. And today we're gonna to be talking not about adopting new skills, but we're gonna be talking about how sometimes we get deterred or we get upset or we get bogged down because our story is a story of struggle and how sometimes we can think that Jesus doesn't love us or that we aren't worthy of things because of things we've done or ways we have failed in the past, right? We're not struggling with surfing, but we're struggling to accept the fact that God loves us no matter what we do. We're gonna be talking about that because in the story of Zacchaeus, we see Jesus loving Zacchaeus no matter what. And we see how the people in his community struggled with that. Hopefully we can learn that it's personal because no matter what we've done, Jesus loves us. And Jesus is with us and here with us no matter what has happened in our lives. So what happens in the story of Zacchaeus? We have been talking a lot about this story of Zacchaeus. And so by now you guys are pretty familiar with him, 
right? So in Luke 19, we read this story of Jesus wandering in a city, getting ready to move uh, from one place to the next. We see Jesus coming up into this spot where Zacchaeus was, and we know Zacchaeus was a little short dude, a wee little lad, and so he had to climb up into a tree in order to see Jesus. Way to go, Zacchaeus. Tree climbing, not something he struggled with. Zacchaeus climbs into a tree. Jesus sees him. He's like, yo, what's up, Zacchaeus? I want to hang out at your house, aka interrupting his trip in order to spend time with Zacchaeus because he knew that it mattered to Zacchaeus to spend time with Jesus. We've been through that story a lot, right? We know that Zacchaeus didn't have the best backstory as we talked about last week. He was a tax collector, which was a job that wasn't super respected because he probably was stealing a little bit. And yet, despite all of that, Jesus wanted to interact with him. Jesus wanted to be in a relationship with him because Jesus loved him no matter what. That's where we're picking up the story. So. Jesus has already had this conversation with Zacchaeus. Jesus and Zacchaeus are hanging out. And here's how the people responded to that story, responded to that time. Luke 19 verses 7 says this. It says, all the people saw this. They saw what Jesus was doing, how Jesus was interacting with Zacchaeus. All the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. He, being Jesus, has gone to the house of a sinner, Zacchaeus. People knew that Zacchaeus had done things in his life that weren't great. And yet Jesus loved him. The people only knew Zacchaeus based off of what he had done. And so they judged him and they spoke ill of him, spoke badly of him, called him a sinner, which he was. And then the people were surprised or shocked that Jesus was spending time with him. And now the people weren't super happy that Jesus was spending time with him. We're going to talk a little bit about that next week as we wrap up this story. But see, Jesus knew something that the people didn't. Jesus knew that Zacchaeus wasn't defined by his backstory. He wasn't defined as a sinner. And Jesus knew that it's personal because he loved Zacchaeus no matter what Zacchaeus had did or had done. No matter what Zacchaeus was doing in his job, no matter the bad choices Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus had made, Jesus loved him. And it's a story we see throughout the Bible. Jesus loved his disciples despite some of the choices they had made and despite some of the wrong things they had done. Jesus loved the woman at the well, which we've talked about in group. He loved her despite knowing that she had made bad choices in her her past life and in her past uh, dating life. Jesus loved her despite that. Jesus loves his enemies. He loves people who are beggars. He loves people who were shunned by society. Jesus loved every person. Jesus loved them all despite knowing what people had done despite knowing backstories. See, Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was enough. That Zacchaeus wasn't defined by his choices or by the bad things that he had done, but because Jesus loved Zacchaeus, he knew that he could move past this judgment of other people that we see in Luke 19, verse 7. That Zacchaeus wasn't defined by what these people thought. And Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was defined by the love that Jesus had for him. Zacchaeus was enough. And friends, we are enough. Last week we talked about backstories and we talked about exploring other people's backstories and talking to our friends and our family as a way to get to know them. And we had some awesome stories at small group. Uh, But this week we're focusing back on ourselves. And we're focusing on the fact that no matter what we've done in our lives, that Jesus loves us, uh, that we are enough. I can tell you that in my life, I have made a lot of mistakes. I make them all the time still. You can turn to your parent and you could ask them the same question. And most of them, if, uh, if they are being honest, frankly, all of them would say that they have made choices and done things in the past that aren't good. We all do things and we all sin. And yet the story of Zacchaeus is our story. And Jesus loves us. 
And Jesus knows that we, despite our choices and our backstory, we are enough. Jesus isn't swayed by the people in Luke 19 who only saw Zacchaeus as a sinner. And Jesus isn't swayed by the people in our lives who maybe would say the same thing about us. Jesus knows that we're enough. And Jesus knows that he loves us no matter what. The story of Zacchaeus is the story of God recognizing who Zacchaeus was at Zacchaeus' core. Not being swayed by anything, not being swayed by the people, not being swayed by the backstory of Zacchaeus. Jesus recognizing Zacchaeus and loving Zacchaeus no matter what. It's personal because Jesus has that relationship with us. No matter what people around us say, no matter what our stories and our past have said, Jesus knows who we are. And Jesus loves us and loves all of it. Right? When we struggle to do things, like we struggle with surfing, Jesus knows that. When we make bad choices, Jesus knows that. Uh, But ultimately, Jesus knows that he died and rose for us. And when we're in a relationship with Jesus, it's personal. And Jesus loves us no matter what. Zacchaeus in this story saw and recognized Jesus' love. And he accepted that love. And then he hung out with him. And he didn't feel separated or judged or like he wasn't enough. Zacchaeus knew he had issues and all those problems, and yet he accepted what Jesus was offering, and he leaned into the love of Jesus. And friends, we have an opportunity to do the same thing. Some of us have already accepted that uh, that relationship with Jesus, and we're working on that relationship, and we know that God loves us no matter what. Some of us have heard it a lot, and maybe we've like felt something cool at Thrive or Hume that make us want to love Jesus, but we aren't fully there. Uh, Some of us can't get over the fact that Jesus doesn't see our mistakes, but sees us. No matter where we're at this week, we're going to all be doing the same challenge. And we're going to be talking about what it looks like for us to lean into God's love. And you're going to be talking about it with your parents. Intimidating. I emailed your parents in this week's email some discussion questions. And I want you guys as a family... And your challenge this week is a family challenge. I want you to spend some time working through some of those questions with your parents. Your parents may need to hear that they're loved by God. You guys definitely need to know that you're loved by God. And so we're going to spend, as a group, time with our families talking about exploring God's love. Now, if you are in a family situation where maybe you aren't comfortable with your parents or they're not really into the church stuff, we're going to also be spending time in small group talking about God's love for you. So if you can, if if you uh, have a family who wants to, your challenge is to have those conversations with your family. And if you can't, that's cool because your challenge is to get ready Because we're going to be having these questions and these conversations in our small groups as well. Uh, Your challenge is to reflect on God's love and hopefully lean into God's love for you this week. So either have those conversations in your home or we'll have them in small group. But your challenge is to lean into God's love. I love this part of Zacchaeus because I daily need the reminder that I am enough and that God's love covers me each and every day. I constantly need the reminder that it's personal because Jesus loves me no matter what. And I love that as a group we get to explore that. Friends, the story of Zacchaeus is a story of God loving us. It's personal because God loves us no matter what. That's what we're going to be talking about in small group. If you need to talk to somebody because you've heard that truth for the first time, again, talk to your parents, text a small group leader, send me a DM. It's an important thing for us to remember. And if it's the first time you're hearing it, we want to talk to you about that. But friends, we're going to be talking about it in small group. Obviously, I'm stoked for it. Uh, I hope that you can lean into God's love today and Monday, and we're going to start talking about it in small groups this week. I love you. God loves you. And let's lean into that together as a community. We'll see you guys this week. See ya.